Well, today we got more Japanese wrestling. This time we got the final road to the new beginning by New Japan Pro Wrestling. And also I got All Japan Pro Wrestling with the last day of New Year Wars. And of course, two events by DDT Pro Wrestling. All of that will be reviewed, discussed, and talked about on this episode of Deleted WrestleZone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling from AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, matches, wrestlers, and championships. I'm your host, Jay Right here. So let's get the show on the road with the final show before New Beginning Hiroshima by New Japan Pro Wrestling. So let's go from start to finish. First match we have Suzuki Goon. Minoru Suzuki and the former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions uh, Kanemaru and El Desperado taking on two of the Young Lions, Yuya Umura and Gabriel Kidd, along with Junior Heavyweight uh, competitor Ryusuke Taguchi. Now, however, the match took a different turn. Yuya Umura has now become an opponent that might get himself hurt for confronting the king of pro wrestling. And I'm talking about Minoru Suzuki. You guys know how that goes. Minoru, like This is one of, the, one of those matches like you ask yourself, what is the young line doing? Does he know who is he facing? There was a moment where Yuya Umura punched in the face Minoru Suzuki hard enough to give him that devilish smile. If, if, if that's the thing about Minoru Suzuki, if you know for a fact he's someone who is capable of doing things, he'll just have a laugh, and that's who Min Minoru Suzuki is. But however, the Young Lions and Taguchi were no match against Suzuki Goons, uh, Minoru Suzuki and Kanemaru and uh, De Desperado. So. Basically, they won their match. Next match, we have Bullet Club members. Yujiro Takahashi teaming with Evil and Jay White. As you know, Jay White has now targeted the six-man never open weight champions, Goto, Ishii, and Yoshihashi. However, on the last road to the new beginning, Goto was reprimanded for assaulting Jay White, due to the fact that he was commentary. Basically, this is revenge for what they did to Yoshihashi. Now, in much of the match, they were facing against Chaos members. Kaguchi Okada, who we all know he wants to face Evil, but Evil has been ignoring him. And then we got Ishii and Goto. They are targeting both Jay White. But however, Jay, <coughs> Jay White had a, a plan all along. He antagonized Yoshihashi to force Chaos to disqualify them, which was a perfect opportunity and allowed Bullet Club to win their match. But however, it didn't end that way. Uh, Goto, Hashi, and Ishii chased uh, Jay White. But however, Okada still wants a piece of evil. Evil does not want nothing to do with him. But it ended up with another fight post-match. But you know how that is. Now the next match, oh my god, this is one of my favorite matches. We have Suzuki Goon members, Doiki, Zack Sabre Jr., and Taichi taking on Bullet Club's Yado and G.O.D., Tamatanga and Tangaloa. As you know, Tamatanga has been playing these mind games with Taichi, who's been demanding the return of the Iron Finger that he obtained 
from the former member Ishka who retired two years ago, about two years ago. But however, uh, Tama has been playing these ridiculous, these funny mind games. He brought three bags. Now you weren't sure what was in it. First bag, he pulled out a glove, kind of like the ones you use when you go snowboarding or whatever. And then the second bag, we he had a baseball mint that's more for a child's. And then all of a sudden, the last one, he it had a, a rubber chicken. And once again, Tama plays these intense mind games for Tai Chi. Tai Chi is losing it, his mind. He's like going at it. Now, however, the match ended in Suzuki Goon winning the match, but they're not satisfied. Two reasons. One, Zack Saber Jr. believes that they are the true. Him and Tai Chi are true, the true masters of the tag team division in New Japan. Because they he views them. They lost the title six times. That makes them the most ridiculous team. And he believes that if they won the titles back, they will convince New Japan to fire them or let them go. But and two. Tai Chi believes that he's he's lost without the iron finger. So he's basically cannot focus at the moment. His main focus is getting his hands on Tama and trying to retrieve what was stolen from him, which is the iron fingers. But as for Tama, he doesn't care. He's he got them right in their heads. That's exactly what he's been doing. But the real question, in it, since we're getting into the Hiroshima New Beginning. Is this will be enough for Tama and his brother to obtain to retain the titles, or we may see once again the dangerous techers regain the tag team titles. We don't know. We will see it see. And however, are we ever gonna see Yato and Doiki face off since they both have <coughs> problems with each other being on the corners of both of these guys? We don't know either. I would love to see that match. So it was a good match, so. Let's keep moving on. Next match, we have another we have a tag team match. We got Max Wato teaming with Tomaki <coughs> <coughs> Tomaki Hamna taking on Lij Lij members Bushi and Tetsuya Naito. As you know, Bushi has made a decision. He wants. <coughs> Excuse me. Wants to challenge uh, Master Wato. Wato has no problem whatsoever. But however, Naito still has issues with Humna for being strong these past couple weeks. But however, uh, I'm not sure if they will have their singles match. But it was a very interesting match. But however, it ended with uh, Naito pinning Tomiyaki Humna. And it kind of ended that way. Now we got the other match, which is the other members of LIJ, Sanada and Hiromu Takahashi taking on uh, Sho and Kota Ibushi. As you know, these two guys are have championship status coming up in the new beginning in Hiroshima. Uh, it's going to be a double main event, as I, from what I can tell. Uh, but it was a great match. Now, I did not anticipate... This whatsoever, it was amazing. But the way it ended, ended with a time limit draw. So basically, this is going to be an interesting storyline and matchup coming up at the new beginning, Hiroshima on the 10th and the 11th. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited because I cannot wait to see this happen. You know, because this is one of those things we have to be like, Oh my god, this is going to be great. So I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited. So let's end it right here and move on with All Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay, so we got All Japan Pro Wrestling New Year Wars on the 24th of January. This took place last month. This was the third day, and I think this was the last show from them. Uh, I still haven't heard anything from any newer events, but I got the chance to review it. Really good show. 
Uh, first match is a six-man tag team match. We got Akira Francisco, Ty, uh, Tajiri, and Jake Lee taking on Purple Haze, uh, Umatan Maro, Uzanagi, and Zeus. Interesting match. Um, I've been following a lot of these guys a lot. Purple Haze are a very standout team. I really enjoy watching it, uh, especially with Tajiri, who I'm way more familiarized, you know, been with uh, WWE before. As for Jake Lee, his name is well known throughout New uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling. But however, the match ended with Zeus pinning uh, Jake Lee, allowing him to win the match for Purple Haze. The next match, we have another six-man tag. We have Evolution to consistent with Dan Tamura and Hikaru Sato teaming with Rambo Kawamura um, taking on Alejandro, Taiko Umari, and Cardell Ito. I'm familiarized with Evolution, really good team. Um, Alejandro, I've seen him only once. But however, uh, it was uh, Tam Tamura who picked up the victory by pinning um, Alejandro down. It was a really good match. I liked it. It was really good. Next match, we have another six-man tag team match. We have Shikara, Raoji Sai, and Yoshitatsu taking on Ryuki Honda, teaming with Tower Twin, Kohi Sato, and... Suji Ishikawa. Uh, basically, it was a, another interesting match. However, it was Twin Towers that brought in a very powerhouse type of match into this. I liked it. Uh, uh, they were able to pick up the victory against uh, Yoshitatsu, who's now been on the sun for a little while, but he'll get back into the high horse. So it was Honda and the Tower Twins that won the match. Next match, we have a new faction called Next Rim, consistent of Atsuki Ayogi, Ryzen ha uh, Hayato, Yuma Ayogi, and Kento um, Miyahara taking on the Infants Terribles, Hokudo Omari, Koji Doi, Kuma Arashi, and Yusuke Ko uh, Kodama. Now, these guys... Uh, Infants te uh, Terribles uh, came out just attacking uh, Next Realm, uh, as always. The match was pretty much in their favor due to the fact they're trying to be the next stable faction to lead, to be the most dominant force. But however, they have an agenda. As soon as they were able to win their match, they made it clear, even though there was no subtitles or translation, but it doesn't take me, doesn't take a genius to figure out. If you guys don't know this, Kento Hamara and, uh, what's his name? Yuma Ayoki are the current All-Asian Tag Team Champions, which they won not too long ago. And now it appears they're targeting these two guys for their titles. So it's kind of obvious to me. If you want to beat the best tag team then it's the perfect opportunity to make a statement. So that's how I saw it. Even though there was no translation, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out if you saw what they were talking about. Next match is a championship match. This is for the um, Gora T uh, Television Championship that's become a hardcore match between Black Mensori versus the champion Jun Kasai. As you know, Jun Kasai has been making all his matches ever since he won the title. Um, hardcore matches, which is his specialty. Uh, Black Mansuri, he, Mansuri is nowhere near in that type of condition. Kind of made it a little bit easier for him to win the match. Well, it was hard, but however, he was able to pull it off. But appears that he has a challenger as soon as he beat Black Mansuri and challenge him for the title. Now, however, <coughs> do I think this is going to be another hardcore match? Possibly, and that's the way I see it. Now, the next match is for the AJPW World Junior Heavyweight Championship between astronaut member uh, Fominori 
Abe versus the champion Koji Iwa Iwamoto. Interesting match, great matchup. It was, a, uh, even though I'm a bit of a fan of the junior heavyweight division, even if you call it cruiserweight, light heavyweight, or however you feel that you want to call it, great match. Uh, but however, it was Koji Iwamoto who won the match. Now, when he was about to give out his little promo, it appears he received a new challenger and is the legendary Shima. Yes, folks, you heard me right. Shima has challenged Koji Iwamoto for the title. Now, I don't think Koji Iwamoto cares who will be his challenger as long as he wins the match. That is how he rolls. He doesn't care who you are. He'll challenge you no matter what. Now we get to the main match. The main event is for the Triple Crown Championship with channel, uh, challenger Shatoro Oshino taking on Suwama. Now, Oshino has made a brief time calling out the whole thing that he wants the title. Suwama basically didn't take it lightly with him. Uh, of course, he challenged him only because he wants to teach him a lesson. But it was a great hard-hitting match. Even though Suwama is a veteran, but Shitaro proved that he can hang with veterans like him. But it was still not enough to dethrone Suwama from his title. And Shitaro Oshino actually regained some respect from Suwama. So the real challenge is who will be strong enough to challenge him. We may never know. So... I think that's it right now with All Japan Pro Wrestling. So let's do one of the two events of DDT Pro Wrestling. Alrighty, so we've got DDT Pro Wrestling, one of two events. The first one we're going to do is Dramatic Did Everyone's Dreams Come True. This took place on the 23rd of January of this year. So it started out with a very funny match between with then Shuko Dino teaming with Antonia Honda taking on Saki Akia and Katsuki Hirata. The way it starts out funny, Antonia Honda, he was acting like he was bored or not motivated. However, the whole thing with the match, even Dino was trying to get him motivated, but somehow he wasn't feeling it or whatever it was. I thought it was funny. Even Dino, when he pulls his pants down, try to get someone's face in his ass. Yes, you heard me correctly. But however, it did not go exactly how Honda Dino would want because Honda was not in a good mood. It ended with um, Hirata actually making the victory for his team. So... That's how it goes. Next match, we have Genrutsi, uh, consistent of Hideko ok Okatani and Mizuki Wat uh, Waraze taking on Akio and Ke um, Keigo Nuku um, Nukumara. Really interesting match between these. No, wait. Ak uh, Akito and uh, Tora Owasha. Uh, Owashi, really good match because these two guys are champions. Uh, Tora, no, Toru Owashi, he is a very powerful dude. Akito, very laid back. And I did enjoy that match a lot because I'm a fan of these two guys. Very interesting individuals and they won their match. The next match <coughs> is a six-man tag team match. We have uh, Mao. Yukio um, Naya and Keigo Nakamura taking on Makoto Oshi, Tomomitsu Matsunaga, and Kazu, uh, Kazusada Iguchi. Now, uh, as you guys know, Iguchi, he's in fact one half of the KO, KOD Tag Team Champions. Uh, of course, um, it was a very interesting match, but mostly I've been seeing um, Oishi and 
Matsunaga being the most hard-hitting team. They were like more of the powerhouse. And it kind of made more sense to me how this was going to end. <coughs> because if you look at, um, what's their names? Mao, Naya, and Nakamura. Mao, he's a very capable wrestler. but And Naya, well, sort of. And Keigo, he's a very entertaining wrestler. But however, his energy hardly gives him any wins. But when I look at the other team... It made more sense, and it did end it in that way with them to win their match. So it's no disrespect out of nothing, but the way I uh, visualize it, it makes more sense if you guys follow it. Next match, we have Damnation, Mad Polly, Soma Takoa, and y Yuji Hino taking on Chris Brooks, Yukio Sakaguchi, and Harashima. Now, this was a very interesting match because, as you know, Damnation is one of the most popular heels within DDT. But, however, you look at um, Yukio Sakaguchi, who is one half of the KOD Tag Team Champions, along with Iguchi. And you got Harashima, a very popular wrestler. I didn't expect um, Chris Brooks, Sakaguchi, and Hira Harashima winning the match but it was a very good match you know i didn't i, I was kind of assuming it was going to be damnation to win but it didn't it was so good i like it next match we have a singles comp um, competition we got uh yusuke okada to uh t taking on yuki unio very interesting match it kind of showed um what okada and Unio can actually do. Unio, he's in fact a champion. I don't remember which title he has, but it's so good. But however, it was Okada who tried to make a name for himself, but it's still not enough. He still lost the match. Well, Yukio Uino actually won. Then we got, uh, for the main event, a tag team match. We got All Out, consistent of Shuna Katsumara and Konosuke. Uh, Takeshita taking on Damnation, Daisuke Sasaki, and Tetsuya Endo. Very interesting match. Uh, very, as you know, uh, Damnation always proven themselves to be a very interesting heel faction, as always. It did allow them to win. They're all thanks to uh, Endo, who always, always picks up the victory with a very interesting submission. I really like watching these guys. So it was Tetsuya Endo who won it for his team. So who is going to be tough enough to take on Damnation? We may never know. So let's go with the second event right now. Okay, so we got the second event by DDT Pro Wrestling. This one's called Dramatic 2021 January Special. This took place in on... Um, January 28th of this year. So it started out with a very interesting news. If you guys follow this. If you guys are know this. DDT are also well known for their famous. 24-7 championship match called the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship. Which is a championship that wrestles. That you have to fit, wrestle 24-7. Recently the latest champion was Britt Baker. And all of a sudden, she lost the title to a very unusual champion. Uh, give me a minute to bring him out here. Yeah. Britt Baker lost to this book while she was reading it. Don't ask me how. That's how the matches work. Even the Vince McMahon Star Hollywood Fame won that title, including... Laura James Cat won it. And of course, that title's on his way back to Japan. Very interesting. So, let's get on with the match. For, uh, with the event. So, we got the first match Toy Kojima taking on Mizuki, uh, Mizuki Warazai taking on Chris Brooks and Akito 
Um, like I said, I'm a fan of Aikido. Really laid back. Wrestler teaming up with Chris Brooks. Really good match. Unbelievable. I like uh, Aikido and Chris Brooks in this one. And, of course, their combination allowed them to win their match, which is really awesome. Next match, we got a five-way match. We have one, first, got, first competitor, Kazuki Irada versus Saki Akia versus Danshuko Dino versus Matt Polly versus the guy who was credited giving the infamous dick flip, Gorgeous Matsuno. Now, you probably ask me, how do I know this? Well, from what I can tell, it was this guy who gave Joey Ryan the infamous dick flip. So, that's what I know. But, however, this match kind of was try was more of a desperation match on one particular person. And that person was Kazuki Irada. He was trying to win this match in his favor. But, however, it turns out that now he has... Issues with one particular person in this match. The one man that he beat him in the previous event. I'm talking about. Then Shuko Dino. And of course it was Hirada who won the match. But it kind of turned in the end. Into a melee. Brawl between these two. And they took it out in the back. <coughs> Next match we have a six man tag team match. We got. Mao, Sh um, Shunma, Katsumara, and Keigo Nakamura taking on Antonio Honda. And with Disaster Box, Toru Owashi, and ha Harashima. These two guys are amazing. Especially Honda, who is a very funny dude. You all know who, how he likes to talk during his matches. Even put a pause in it and does his little... <laughs> so... Uh, kind of worked out a little bit, but however, it was um, Tota Owashi who picked up the victory when he took out, I think it was Nakamura on this one. So, very impressive dudes. Now, once again, we saw in the back, apparently, I don't know what Hirada was doing. He um, opened the box that contained the book and the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship. He even called out for a ref to make the pin, but however, it was ruined thanks to then Shuko Dino, who has his issues towards him. So we have no winner yet, but however, the owner found the title and the book, so he might set up a match. Maybe. We'll see who will win this title. I'll keep you guys apprised of that. Next match is a singles competition between Yukio, Naya, and Yuji Hino. Now, this match happened right after Damnation Wonder match. Apparently, Yukio Naya decided to take out his aggression out <coughs> on Damnation. But however, Yuji Hino responded and gave him this match. But however... Yukio Niya, he seems like a big, powerful dude. But however, it's Yuji Hino, who is way more powerful than him. And it did allow him to win his match. However, post-match, he was attacked with, by another individual that he has come across before. He arm-wrestled him in a previous DDT event. And he won that match. So basically, he has a rivalry with this person. Don't know when will that happen, but it will happen. Next match we have is another six-man tag team match. We got Yusuke Okada team, uh, teaming with Jen Rutso, with consistent of Hideki Okawatani and Mokoro Orishi, taking on Damnations, uh, Soma Takoi, Daisuke Sasaki, and Tetsu Endo. Very bet one of the most interesting matches because these guys are almost equal, but however. When it comes to 
Tetsuya Endo. He's always the guy who likes to end the match in his favor. Not only for his team because he doesn't play by anybody's rules. So it was Damnation that won this match. Now we get to the main event. This was a non-title tag team match. This is between Kanus, Konosuke, Takeshita, and Yuki Inio taking on the current KOD Tag Team Champions, Eruption, Yukio Sakaguchi, and Kazusada Iguchi. This was a non-title match. Now, it would have been simpler, but I'm assuming if they would have beaten these guys, they would win a chance at the titles. It didn't go that way whatsoever. So, it kind of went more into the whole story. Um, a really good match, especially watching Yukio Saka, Sakaguchi throwing a bit of the submission techniques. He was barefoot, using still using the shin guards, which he normally. I think he. I I can tell by the guy he is an expert. MMA fighter or martial arts, however, he's being portrayed, but it came in handy. But it was Eruption that that won the match. I don't know if there'll be any challengers to take on Eruption for the KOD Tag Team Championships. We just gotta wait and see who will be the lucky ones to take them out. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. There will be more Japanese wrestling. Apparently, more has been popping up in this in. That I've been seeing. You'll be getting more of Stardom. Tokyo Yoshi Pro. And Ice Ribbon. Along with more of Pro Wrestling Noah's. Dragon Gate. And you may get a brand new. Uh, mention of uh, an event. And, uh, by promotion I heard of. But I've never seen any of their events. This one is from. Active Events Pro Wrestling. And another event by. Just Hop Out. And of course. Dragon Gate. So, <coughs> I must bid all of you guys do. So, I'll see you guys in the same DWZ time, same DWZ channel. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang!